Hey, now welcome back to the episode of Road and Bond. Just got done watching the Echo Park Grand Prix at Circuit of the Americas for the NASCAR Cup Series. Boy, this is um, maybe one of the least drama-filled races we've seen so far this year. The race, you know, was around 2 hours and 43 minutes to be exact. The only cautions we have in this race were the stage cautions. Uh, this is the we brought back stage cautions after two lackluster type races at Indianapolis and Watkins Glen, and really it didn't really make much of a difference if what if NASCAR's goal was to make more drama or make it more competitive, or if they were trying to hopefully get more cautions out of having an additional two restarts. We didn't see much of that. William Byron dominated this race, led 42 laps of 68 total laps run. Really, he had the best car, won the pole. I thought Ty Gibbs had, you know, the second best car, you know, from qualifying. Well, there we break down this race. It kind of was pretty calm most of the time off the restart. But on the first lap, we had some issues with Corey Joy getting in to Martin Truex. He it was the turn right before the long straightaway, and he got. It looks like he came off the, you know, off in some of the runoff area and kind of didn't see Truex there. I don't know. Spire didn't tell him. He ran into Truex. We also didn't. Truex also then got ran into Bo Wallace, and that really set back those guys' days. Bo Wallace had to come pit. Truex pitted. I think the Joyce pitted. They had some flat spots and damage. They had to get fixed. But then the rest of stage one was really a William Byron dominated race. We had Ty Gibbs in there. Ty Rank was up there. Ross Chastain was up there. Um, but really, no one was really a match for William Byron that stage. He ended up pitting early. A couple of guys, we have multiple cycles of cars that would pit early to hopefully, you know, Stay, keep their track position and knock over stage points. We saw that with William Byer going and pinning, which then led to Christopher Bell. He decided to stay out and go for the, the stage win. He got the stage win. On the stage two results were Christopher Bell first, Daniel Suarez second, Michael McDowell third, Austin Zindrick fourth, Austin Dillon fifth, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. sixth, William Byron seventh, eighth, Ty Gibbs, ninth, Ty Rank, and tenth, Ross Chess. Staying great stage points for Christopher Bell. And then going to stage two, Christopher Bell stayed out. Also, Michael McDowell did stay out, stay out in that stage, too, to hopefully have a different strategy, to hopefully maybe have a, a two-pit stop strategy. And then stage two began. Uh, Christopher Bell was able to hold off William Byron for a couple good bit of laps, but then in lap 20, William Byron with the fresher tires was able to pass Christopher Bell. Ty Games was able to file in second there as Christopher Bell car kind of wore out, gave out with the older tires. And then later in stage two, we had some contact with Brian Sosky and Bubba Wallace. They got into it with each other. It looked like Brad had locked up the tires in that turn, and Bubba was a little slow. So Make Bubba spin around. Definitely not great for those two drivers, really. Brian Sosky had a terrible day. I mean, he, I believe, finished like 34th overall. He spun multiple times. Not great for Bubba Wallace. He also had contact early in the race. And then as William Byron is leading, Kyle Larson got spun out by Christopher Bell in turn one. That was looking like it was blatantly Christopher Bell. I believe he was trying to hold off Larson. Larson was on the newer tires. Christopher Bell was still on those older tires at the moment. And uh, that's not a great look. Later on in the race in that stage two, we had some contact with Kamui Koibayashi. Uh, he got a couple of taps from Ricky Stenhouse. And then he got spun on Ricky. And then he also collected Ricky with him. Uh, they spawned, they were able to keep going. We, we just saw a lot of spins in this race. Many, many spins, not cautions leading to those spins. And then the same thing as what stage one was, we had the leaders pinning early, which then led Denny Hamlin to take the stage to a win. The stage two results were Denny Hamlin first, Ryan Blaine second, Martin Truex third, Todd Gillen fourth, Ryan Priest fifth, Brad Sosky sixth, Junior Nienchuk seventh, William Byron eighth, Dan Howard ninth, and Josh Berry tenth. Stage three began. Ross Chastain was able to take the lead from William Byron into the restart and really was able to hold a strong lead. Also, in, later in stage three, we had a penalty from Chase Elliott cutting the course in the S's. That's where most of the penalties were all weekend from trucks expanding the cup. There wasn't as many penalties, I don't believe, in the S for, you know, track limits penalties in the cup series this week. So that's good. You got to see the better, you know, the overall better skill of the drivers when you don't have as many penalties. But that was an ongoing topic this week with track limits being such a heavy and how many penalties NASCAR was laying. At least they are being consistent with the penalties. Uh, but that definitely hurt Chase Elliott's ability because he was running, I think, the top 10 in that race and had a really fast car. And this could have been some good momentum for Chase. Some people thought he had a car that could win 
and not really send it back. Because every time, if you get nabbed for those penalties, you have to have a pass-through penalty on with pit road speed. And then also later, stage three, we had Christopher Bell coming back and made contact with Kyle Bush. Overall, I was looking oh, the replay. Christopher and like, Bell. Christopher Bell was taking a Kyle normal. Bush. Turn not that, clear. Turn Kyle Bush. Now, despite all of this. Kind of, like Kyle Bush almost like chopped down on Christopher Bell. Um, I don't know. I, I, I think I would blame it more on racing move, but also I felt like, you know, Christopher Bell was just making a move, a normal move, and maybe Kyle Bush is around. You know, I would think that's also got the spotters need to also, that's, they should also be in for blame. We'll come back on that issue because that also dreaded over to post race. And then the next race on lap with around 24 laps to go. We saw a pass from the lead with from William Byron passing Ross. Ross was fading. His tires weren't as good. I think he flat spot his tires early in that run. And, and William Byron was a better car. But then when, when, when it came with that, then we ended up having Ty Gibbs end up passing Ross. And that's what then led to our pit stop. I believe it was William Byron first, Ty Gibbs second. Ross Chastain third, and then Alex Bowman fourth. Alex Bowman ended up pinning the first out of those four. The whole thing made, made me jump the gun, have a good pit stop. He ended up having a good pit stop. The next lap around, we saw William Byron and Ross Chastain pit. William Byron had a good pit stop. Looks like Ross had a slow pit stop, which allowed Alex Bowman to jump the second. Ty gets pit a lap after that, and he ran up around to, I believe, around third, fourth. After that cycle, we knew we saw Christopher Bell come back on strong. You know, after winning stage one, kind of being back in traffic, it was able to really uh, make some spots. He had a super fast car, was able to then make some passes on the top dogs and get to second with around, to pass Ty Gibbs to get to second with around three hours to go. We were like, okay, he, he's got a fast car. And he was running a couple tenths faster than what William Byron was. It's just, is he, is he going to have enough time? You know, three laps, it's a 3.4 mile track. There's a lot of opportunities to make mistakes. It's technical. Mr. Bell is really making a ton of ground. I think. He ended up getting close to a second with the last lap. But, I mean, William Byron was just, all he had to do was hit his marks, not be over-aggressive. Christopher Bell was the one kind of pushing it, risking to make mistakes. Uh, but all that aggressive driving from Christopher Bell trying to push it, it wasn't enough. William Byron was able to take home the win, get his second win in the season, be the first multi-winner of the 2024 NASCAR Cup Series season. Then post-race, we had a confrontation between Kyle Busch and Christopher Bell. Kyle Busch went up to Christopher Bell confronted him about the move that Christopher Bell made on him to end up spinning out Kyle Busch. What I got from that confrontation is that Kyle Busch said that Christopher Bell has got one coming for him. You know, I, I still would put the blame on Kyle Busch, maybe the spotters, because the move, if you look at the replay, Christopher Bell was making a normal line, like, and Kyle Busch was making maybe a, he was much tighter to the turn. It was weird. He, like, came and then, kind of chopped down on Christopher Bell. I don't know. I'm not a race car driver. I'm not trying to act like I knew what was going on there. Uh, but also, I think you have to also got to look at the spotters. The spotters could do a better job of telling their drivers where both each other was to not let that happen. Uh, but that's just that's what's going to happen when you're both racing hard and aggressive. to see when Kyle Busch does choose to pay back Christopher Bell because um, you know Kyle Busch also said that in a clip that you know has he wrecked he asked Christopher Bell have has he wrecked Christopher Bell yet he hasn't so Kyle Busch is, is taking notes and he says Christopher Bell's got one coming we got Richmond next week and now also I think we got Martinsville next week so we got two back-to-back -back short tracks so watch out for some payback to Christopher Bell Due to that turn one incident. But if we look at our top 20 finishers, well, start with Zane Smith. Great finish. He's been running pretty bad and just finishing terrible. That's a good finish for him. Disappointing for, for Kyle Larson. Bubba Wallace, okay. Chase Elliott, 16. Definitely also not great. Danny Hamlin, due to the, the certain pitch strategy, is really, I think, what sets some of these guys back and not finish as great. Uh, you know, overall, you know, Ryan Blaine, Chase Briscoe, fine for them. Joey Nagano, okay. He wasn't running it. As great in the early races for Joey Nagano. Uh, top 10 for Martin Truex. Got Kyle Busch, good run for Kyle Busch. He's had two bad weeks, so that's good recovery for him. Chris Buescher was the top four. Eighth, Ross Chastain, fine for him. Once out front, but I think those tires and just the, he kind of fell back there after losing the lead from William Byron. Asia Amadeir, when he's running a part time schedule, mostly road courses, good finish for him. Ty Rennick, 
Guy won last year. Didn't have a yeah, strong car, but not a winning pace car. Um, Alex Bowman, fourth. Good run for him. And he has back-to-back top fives. Another great finish for Ty Gibbs. Ty Gibbs is legit. Christopher Bell came up strong. Just didn't have enough for William Byron at the end there. And then William Byron first. Congrats to William Byron. He's, he's legit. He's good. Um, I don't know. You know, the Chevys, I still think the overall, I think the Toyotas are still the better car overall. I think the short tracks, especially the Toyotas, are going to be good. We're going to come to two short tracks next week where the Toyotas are running that new uh, short track package. So look out for them. But not surprised this from William Byron. I think this is what we expect. He is, to me, he's the top dog, I think, at Andrew Motorsports. You can compare to him, him and you know, or Kyle Larson. Two more drivers I want to mention was SVG, Shane Van Gisbergen, finishing 21st. I think he had lost for first gears, had some mechanical issues. Um, I'm just saying, look, he, he was running you know, top 15, right outside the top 10. But it just shows you that, yes, even though SVG is a three-time super, supercar champion, you know, these Cup Series guys are still good road racers, and they're just as, they're very skilled. So it's not going to be, it's not going to be a walk in the park. I don't think SVG is going to win a road course race besides the Chicago Street Course race will be probably his best chance to win all year this year in the Cup Series. And then Kamui Koibayashi finishing 30th, another bad finish for him. He just, he got, you know, beat up around, you know, just, he, he, he seemed comfortable, but it's just, it's still hard. It's only a second race in that car. He's still getting used to the car, getting used to the way the driver's driving and are a little bit more aggressive. So, you know, definitely disappointing for him. Hopefully he gets another opportunity at 2311 and TRD to run another race. This race on the rolling rate, this race was okay race. Okay, we had some strategy with drivers. Um, it, you know, due to the fact that there's new stage cautions are back, you really put your drivers in a bind. If you're trying to go from the win and keep your track position, you're going to pit early. If you're trying to get those stage points, you're going to stay out, and hopefully people in front of you pit and all that. And that was, you know, was okay. But, you know, NASCAR probably wanted more out of that, those, out of those you know, restarts that they had, and maybe more racking, I don't know. Um, now, I do think the drivers were really working the car in this race. They were pushing it. Um, Corey LeJoy, I guess, I think he fell out or not collapsed or just was really exhausted out in this race. He wasn't evaluated from the infield, cancer, infield care center, excuse me, so he's okay. But that's also one thing. This track is very busy. It's a lot of shifting. It's very hard on your body. You're really using all your muscles. You're really fighting the car. And, I mean, we only had two cautions, and it, so it was nonstop. For these drivers, that's a lot of work they're doing for so many for so many laps and so many miles at this track. Uh, so it's a lot of wear and tear on those bodies. So you know the, the drivers were definitely not comfortable. It wasn't like a smooth sailing race for these drivers. They were on and they were working hard, you know. And we saw a lot of cars spin out too because um, of it because they were really pushing it, right? So drivers were making mistakes. That's what you want. It's just that the mistakes didn't lead to big wrecks that cost cautions for more opportunity for restarts. And yes, if there was more when you start to probably win a bit of a better race, I bet you, because there would be more exciting, maybe three wide dive, dive bombs. Um, you know, we guess we saw the strategy, but the strategy just never worked out because there was not enough cautions. Like I said, I've been saying that <laughs> so much. Last year's race was probably a lot more exciting because you had those crazy turn one restarts in the turn one, cars bo- bobbling up. I think the restart zone was a lot better. Um, it, it made the cars a lot more spread out. We could still, you, cars were still able to really be aggressive, though, and make maybe tie them up or make spots up in that. In that area. So I think the restart zone was a much better unique thing. You know, if I want this track to come back, I don't I don't mind at all. If it comes back, fine. Now I'm still would be a bigger moral fan of maybe bringing back in our short track oval if they can fix the short track package, like a North Wilkesboro. We'll see. All right. That's what we were some people were saying. But if I'm gonna get this the rating for this, I'm gonna give it a five point two. It's a fine race. You don't have to have you don't can't have bangers. You can't have Atlanta every week. These Bristol type tire management. You can't expect that. We can't put we can't put NASCAR on this high standard because we saw this incredible one incredible race. Now every race has to be incredible or it's a terrible race. Yes, was I I, I was definitely still intrigued because who knows? If the cars come out, can Chris can Chris Rebell catch him? Who can catch William Byron? There was still this intensity to see what could happen. So it was still a fine race, five point two. I'm looking forward to next week as we can do some short tracks. Hopefully that short track package is better. Interesting to see what comes out of this race, uh, whatever drama we hear. We'll see what Kyle Bush does. He retaliate these next two weeks. You know, 
Because you know, Kyle Busch also, when it comes to Kyle Busch, he's a much more, he drives very respectable. So if someone, you know, doesn't race him as respectful, like in Spun, he, he has the right, in my opinion, to, you know, confront that person, even though maybe he didn't, maybe he was also at fault. So that's all I'm saying with that. Besides that, thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoy, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you again. Goodbye.